Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode three of Gracefall, uh, Blood Moon. Uh, last time, the the crew uh, successfully navigated their way through the forest, uh, meeting the uh, queen of Zap Zaps, Queen Zap Zaps, a giant lightning raccoon, um, and her babies, and a crown was made for. Uh, her to collect lightning, aka zap zaps, for her. Um, they also found a uh, a danger grove, an iridescent uh, murder glade. Uh, many it was called many different things last episode, uh, and nobody touched anything. I can go back and touch it still if you want. Uh, We're smarter than that, Andy. Sometimes <laughs> gotta give us at least um, some credit. Next time. <laughs> Next time. Um, uh, and then we ended the episode with the uh, human quartermaster, uh, kind of a human knight quartermaster. She's a champion fighter, I think. Um, becoming a werewolf, uh, which uh, Claire successfully immediately put to sleep before she got all her werewolf hit points. Uh, and uh, Clangly uh, tied up in chains. Uh, and that's where we'll pick up. Speaking of, Dan could not join us tonight, so Clangley will probably be quiet. Um, imagine he is saying to adventure in the background. To <laughs> um, adventure! Uh, and bending things that need to be bent, like chains. Um, uh, okay, so... how Sleep lasts a minute, is that right, Claire? That is correct, okay. yes. Uh, so a minute later... Uh, the werewolf, uh, her armor buckling around her much larger werewolf form. She was already a pretty big lady. Uh, um, her coarse fur sticking out, her sword kind of, uh, she has a great sword and that kind of busted off her back and her arms are tied behind her. She starts snarling and snapping and growling and, uh, howls. Okay. So, this tracks with all I've heard about werewolves before. Oh, you've heard about what now? Yeah, could you explain what a werewolf is to the class? Um, <laughs> well, I don't have a lot of experience or academic knowledge to go off of, but... Where I'm from, and apparently here as well, there's something called lycanthropy, where I'm not too sure. Under full moons, people turn into things like this. Sometimes, supposedly, they're still themselves. Sometimes they're not, and fortunately, it seems in Maddie's case, she's not. Uh... I think uh, Wynne will look through her notebook for any mentions of lycanthropy. Give me a D100 check, please. Ooh. 23. 23. Okay. Uh... Flipping through, uh, you find a picture of what looks like a bear kind of walking on two legs. And it's like clearly like a like a pictograph from like the circus or something like that. And it just says underneath, uh, beasts who walk on two legs are common on Elsier. They can be found, well, everywhere and are quite harmless. <laughs> I think, like, Wynne will be like, read the book, look at Maddie, read the book again, be like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sensing an edit. Imminent revision. Uh. Is Issa, oh. do you know, like, any of the, uh, like, how to stop werewolves or how to 
turn her back? Well, she'll go back to normal at sunrise. But most myths don't focus on caring so much as killing. And I quite like our quartermaster. So she just has to stay like that? One night a month as long as we're apparently on the surface, and if it's... Oh, goodness. If it's just her and she didn't know about this, then she might not be the only one. Oh. Well, that's going to be something we have to contend with. Uh, as she howls, you all can hear in the distance a chorus of howls. Oh. Oh, my. That sounded like a lot. It did. Uh, Gloom is still kind of sputtering to himself, and he goes, five, it was five. I can count the howls. Five? Uh, uh, thank you, Gloom. Of course. You, uh, seem to have some, um, experience with this, unfortunately. Any thoughts? Um, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Marty said, you're just secretly back in Kartakis. It's just, this is just Kartakis again, everybody. No. Um, it's Kartakis. Uh, no, am I, am I going to have to hear the morning song again? <laughs> you're playing a goblin again. This is your own fault. Um, uh, uh, yeah, Gloom never left. Um, uh, no, Gloom, Gloom kind of starts, Gloom is sputtering and like, he, he starts talking kind of very quickly and it, it it's, as he's a warforged, like it's almost like like words are coming out at the same time. Like he's like his processors are like overloading a little bit. He seems really nervous, obviously, and he just starts saying like people can turn into wolves sometimes, and they're they're always mean about it, and they just they attack you and they can bite you, and 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 then um, but sometimes they can also turn into wolves. Wolves turn into people, and people turn into wolves, and and sometimes they're nice to you, but most of the time they're mean to you, and. And, and if you get a sword and you throw it away, sometimes it'll come back and nothing can stop them, not even plants. And um, I just, it turns out, I just want to go home, actually. Understandable. Uh... Um, uh, and if past is precedent, they can't die. But that might be a very specific case that doesn't apply here. Don't trust anyone with a mustache. It sounds like you're talking about someone specific. Okay. Was it the mustache thing? Yes. Okay. I don't think I've... Maddie has a mustache. Well, she kind of does now. <laughs> In a way. More of a muzzle. Um. Okay. Muzzle. So, man... That's an idea. Keep that in mind next time. Yeah. So, Maddie, it, does it look like she's um going to break free anytime soon, or is it like... Let me give her a strength check. Werewolves are not as strong as you think. <laughs> not as strong as I think, at least. Well, I think that's because they wanted them to not be an overpowered player option. <laughs> yeah. Well, they have yeah. to point out for the record i am slightly surprised andy threw a werewolf at me before i threw a werewolf at andy just what just it's just werewolves yeah. uh and i right? would like to point out despite kartakis this is the first proper werewolf because they weren't werewolves they were they similar were wolf, wears. They were wolf wears um uh, she is struggling but the the chains are holding tight um uh, they, it's, it's good metal, uh, that Clang Lee welded together and, um, 
uh, it's yeah, they don't seem to be buckling at all. Uh, I think uh, Wynn would like sort of like get on her haunches and sort of cycle through her uh, her animal noises to see if any of them like connect with Maddie. Okay. Make her speak with small beasts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you you go through a couple. Uh, Maddie, I assume you don't get terribly close. Maddie snaps at you, and uh, she says um, that uh, Paylark has promised me flesh. Who is here to deliver? Uh, who is Paylark? Uh, so you would know that Paylark is the god of monsters. Oh. He's, um, he's the king of the wastes, the father of monsters. Uh, he's sort of not a big deal on Wyanyoth, because there aren't really that many monsters left. Um, they're, you know, in zoos or captivity. Um, and I do mean, like, like, as there are no, like, monstrous races or anything like that. It's like, you know, bullets and Bahirs and stuff like that. Um, he, yeah, he's a chaotic evil, uh, Tempest. Uh, his domains are Tempest, Death, War, Trickery, and Twilight. And Magic. He's one of the three gods of Magic. He's still around and has power and some worshippers, but he's kind of not really a big deal anymore. <laughs> he helped overthrow the Titans, and that's kind of his one of his deals so they let him be a god still his pager went off and he was very confused <laughs> where well oh werewolves i can do something with werewolves respond ah uh, so uh, like is the whole Promising you fresh flesh thing, uh, is that, like, a recent turn of events? Or is it just, like, he told you, you specifically? Uh, she says, um, long have I been caged, and finally, uh, I am let loose, and the, the king of the wastes speaks to me. He promises me flesh. Kind of looks around, sees a bunch of Warforged, looks back at Wynn. Yes. Hey, there are about five of us here that should probably be really concerned. Oh yeah, Dust is hiding behind Gloom. Gloom, get him! <laughs> Claire kind of has her hands hovering over Wynn, just ready to, like, pull her back. <laughs> I was like, I'm... I'm I'm spotting you. Uh, can't we promise you something else? <laughs> kind of seems very confused. What would you equate with f fresh meat? Uh... Good times? Camaraderie? <laughs> yes, flesh accompanies good times. Flesh now. Uh, maybe not our flesh, but we could go find some new and exciting place to maybe find some flesh. Can I speak to Maddie? <laughs> um... She says, I have been locked inside that pathetic woman's brain for too long. I'm not giving her up. Not when I'm finally free. Let me free. No, I, I don't I, think so. <laughs> kind of pauses for a second. I won't eat you. Hmm. <laughs> And a squints, or the hedgehog. This is oh. this is called bargaining. 
I don't think Spicy would let you eat him. Or he eat her. So... Because I think I'm pretty sure you're lying to me. It's just a vibe I'm getting. So, um... Why don't you sit tight here and in the morning, if you're still around, we can have a more adult, uh, adult conversation? Because you seem to be all in one thing. Yeah, she kind of, she whines, uh, uh, yeah, like a, like a defeated or do sad dog, you know, whines and then howls again, joining the chorus of howls. Do those sound any closer? Give me a perception check. Helps if I roll the right die, but I did roll a 12 on my d12. That's pretty good. Nice. Ten. Okay. Ten. I also got a ten. <laughs> oh, should I roll one? Sure. Some NPCs. Some of He's at are. least one of us have good perception. Ah! Money's not on dust. I also rolled a 10. Oh, dang! <laughs> well, three tens have to mean something, right? Uh, Add them together, they're 30. <laughs> dust is all mental stats, so he actually has a solid wisdom. Nice. Um, uh, crap for anything else, but... Um, Okay, Gloom kind of swivels his head, and he says, "No, they're definitely, they're definitely closer. They're definitely closer." How closer? Oh, I'd, um, will they I'd, be here in the next eight hours? Closer? Yes. Night is still eight hours, right? Yes. Okay. Well, I hope. We need some kind of shelter when we need it minutes ago. Uh, not much we can do. We could try fortifying one of the tents, maybe making a perimeter. Uh, Dust says, the storm's passed. Should we go back to the ship? That's what I was thinking. Um, do wolves climb trees particularly well, Mr. Dust? Uh, Mr. Gloom. Um, uh, like really tall trees. I don't. Th I probably know better than a regular person. I would think they're not like cats. For the ship. Hopefully, it's still in trees. Hopefully. I didn't hear any loud booms, so I think we're good. Um. What would you like to do to Matilda? I guess leave her here. Okay. Langley still have extendo arms, and how does he feel about carrying or at least dragging a dog? <laughs> uh, he would carry her. He doesn't really have extendo arms. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> I can hope. Yeah, it's... He's got a... He's, I actually don't know how big he is. I imagine he's fairly big, so he has a fairly large wingspan, but I do imagine he is the tallest of all of you, but that might be the top hat. I mean, on one hand, if we leave her here, then she'll keep howling until the wolves find her and then might set her free. But if she keeps howling throughout the night, then the wolves are going to find where her ship is. So it can go either way. Well, they're wolves, and unless you have some way of masking sense real quick, they'll find where the ship is anyway. No, oh, that's true. And it would really suck for her to wake up covered in chains with also, no one else that around. Is my second concern is I would like her to wake up not out here all by herself. I have concerns about leaving her tied up here, Wolf, or not. Still don't know what else is out there. So we drag her back? 
Isabel is going to find one of the, like, long tent poles, and with someone to help steady it, kind of scoot it through some of the chains that are on her, so they can just lift up on the pole and Maddie's dangling in the middle okay, of them. Yep. <laughs> That's one way to do it. It works. Right now, things working is more important than things even working well or working fancy. No one's around to look at the fancy. Well, off to the ship then. Off to the ship. Okay. Uh, Clangly and Wheezy will pick up the pole and uh, 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 as she's kind of swinging back and forth, she'll occasionally snap um, and Wheezy will just as far as she can. I'm made of metal. You can't eat. I'm sorry. You can't eat me. This is my voice. Nope. That dog. <laughs> really long, rolled up newspaper. Um, just get one of those squirt bottles. Just. <laughs> she turns back into a person. Just like, oh, what? No. Uh, um, uh, okay, so you all start walking back. Um, uh, uh, Gris and Hamlet uh, are the uh, the captain and co uh, pilot uh captain and first mate and they've they kind of sat at opposite ends of the camp and they continue to kind of hover in like opposite orbits basically they, they don't really get near each other again uh but you all start to walk back the 10 of you <laughs> um plus your werewolf captive pardon me so you all um, it's, I think I said about five kilometers to the ship from where you are. So it takes you, you know, better part of an hour to retrace your steps. Uh, or, uh, yeah, like 45 minutes an hour. Um, and, uh, you all find the ship. It's, uh, there are a bunch of broken branches around it that kind of are leaning on top of it. And it looks like it kind of went like this a little bit, but it's still in the tree. It didn't, as as Claire pointed out, you didn't hear any loud noises in the middle of the night uh, to imply it broke or uh, is loose in any way. It's just kind of slightly ajar. Well, if it's settled, there's a chance it's at least up there somewhat sturdier. Time to ride a lift. Okay. Uh, I assume, yeah, I assume you left the lift there. You didn't dismantle it or anything. Okay. It's kind of defeats the purpose to take yeah, it apart. I don't know. Uh, uh, okay. So as you're as you're approaching, um, uh, as, as you start to to take the lift back up, um, there oh. are some uh insects you see flying above uh, in kind of the 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 vicinity the vicinity of the ship and they are the lightning bugs that queen zap zap um uh mentioned uh feasting on before so they're they look like fireflies uh, except they kind of their big uh bioluminescent butt like literally crackles with lightning kind of when they when they illuminate so it's providing a nice glow but can't wait to be inside a big metal ship uh but like real fireflies they don't really seem to care about you very much so uh so you all get on the lift swinging um uh clangly and wheezy let matilda go alone like second to last um, and uh, Gloom and uh, Gris kind of load her on. Uh, do you have any idea where you want to put her? 
There's the cargo hold, then there's the engine room, then there's the passenger cabin, and then there's cockpit. Thinking cargo hold. Uh, yeah, Clangley agrees. Uh, um, and the other Warforge nod, and they, they take her back there. Uh, uh, do you want to leave guards? Yes, and is there also a door to the cargo hold? Yes, yes. It's like a big kind of garage-style door that can be lowered. Mm, make a barring system for that real quick. Okay, yeah, yeah. You can chain it to something attached to the ship uh, down at the bottom. And actually, yeah, there actually is a locking system for it, so you just lock it. Uh, Neat. It's a chain with a lock, but yeah. Um, okay. Uh, do you want, does anyone want to take a turn guarding or do you want the NPCs to just figure it out? Because they can just do it. I mean, it seems safer for the Warforge to do it. Okay. I can guard technically because I don't really sleep. Yeah, do you, do you get a low power mode? Uh, we get the sentries rest, so Yes. Take a long rest, spend at least six hours in an inactive, motionless state rather than sleeping. In this state, you appear inert, but it doesn't render you unconscious, and you can see and hear as normal. Okay, perfect. Uh, so yeah, the Warforged uh, can all set up bunk over there, and then there will be f- five guards. If we all just sit in an equidistant circle around the mm-hmm. werewolf and lock on. Okay. And she can't eat you if she does wake up. Or if she is awake, but if she breaks free. Let's see. Okay. Um, uh, the rest of you, uh, Gwen and Isabel, are you going to go sleep? Or is there anything else you would like to accomplish tonight? It's been a long day. <laughs> Oh, yeah, like, I've been thinking about it, and Isabel has probably been going since before the ships launched. She probably did do a bunch of so, prep work. and As soon as it's like, there is not a problem that you need to solve right now, probably out. Okay. Uh, is she a snorer? No, but she's kind of fidgeting around a whole lot in her sleep okay. and is clanking around a whole bunch. It's not a good restful sleep, and she has trouble getting comfortable. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not the most comfortable place to sleep. It's not meant for, like, long-term journeys, really. So Also, she has to sleep with her arm on, and that thing is heavy. <laughs> Just, yeah, I don't know how you do that. You get the impression she normally lies down on that side, but now there's currently an arm in the way. Uh... Uh, a win. Uh, I think Win will make some notes in her little note or little guidebook, and like just put a big X where that bear picture is, and like writes up a few things about uh, like anthropy and all that stuff. Okay. And she kind of just makes a little pillow and then goes to bed. Okay. You are now Wyan Yoss, foremost werewolfologist. <laughs> um, uh, okay, perfect. Let's roll some dice. Okay. As the night goes on uh it's been about six hours so you all get a long rest but before the sun comes up you all can start to hear a scrabbling at the bottom of the tree that wolves and yeah looking down you can see there is there are two werewolves down there Has the sun risen? No. Okay. 
No, it's. I hope it's we don't do to... anything about. Oh, yeah, good. I was just going to say, it's close to dawn, but it's not dawn yet. Okay. Um, I vote we don't do anything about that until they don't have claws and teeth. Seconded. Okay. You're just going to wait them out? Yeah, she's also kind of like squatting at the edge of the door, like staring at them like a child and looking at a fish tank. (laughs) It's like... I know you're still there. I can see you moving. Oak the glass. Yeah, she throws. She like takes like a loose bolt and then tosses it down there. <laughs> uh, they howl and kind of. Uh, one of them pounces at the where like the bolt landed, and it looks around and. Um, <laughs> she throws another one. She's like, it. Eh. <laughs> again. Uh, one of them looks up and, uh, you can see they have blood on their clothing. Ah! (laughs) And they say, Yes, Palark says there is some flesh here. It is a shame you have not fed our sister. And I press to digitate a laser pointer. <laughs> sure. I am going to keep them distracted for a minute. Yeah, they uh, between the the bolt and the laser pointer, they they their attention has been diverted. Well, Paylark asked for flesh, and he got um something else. I hope he's as happy with this. Maybe he can become the god of laser pointers or something. That that would be god pretty rad. Un- god of the uncatchable red dot. Um, okay. Whose turn is it for distract werewolf duty this month? <laughs> um, Gloom comes over and he pulls out a very worn looking yellow ball and he says, kind of waves it and he goes, who wants the ball? Who wants the ball? <laughs> and he just like chucks it really far. Whoa. <laughs> One of them just the one who wasn't talking, the one who kept being distracted by the bolt, just off. Good dog. Likes ball more than flesh. Good to know. They are not as clever as the ones I have encountered. They seem sort of, um, uh, pardon the pun, laser focused. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I saw their teeth and their claws, I did not think that they would, you know, be like this. What did you think they would be like? You know, ravenous, tear you apart, do anything yes. to get yes. uh, to the... You know, you know how like normal dogs like bones. I'd assumed that they would like the bones within those of us who have them just so much that they tear off your flesh to get to them. I have seen no evidence that that any of that is incorrect. They're just also distractedable. It's been a long couple days, and it's going to be a long few more. Also, if these are the same type of creature that Maddie is, does that mean that they are people when they're not wolves? Likely. And if that's a who are these people, is it possible that there were other werewolves on the other ships? Yep. That seems to be the conclusion. That's what I thought of last night. 
<laughs> Claire cannot make very meta facial expressions, but you get the idea that she's making that like one screen cap of Brian David Kilmer where he's like realizing an unfortunate truth. That's that's the face she's making right now. <laughs> uh, reading all of the Halo novels. <laughs> Oh my god, they were on the ships. Uh, my god, they were civilians. <laughs> um, if you look down, again, uh, the werewolf has started to climb the tree and is being somewhat successful. Ah, I threw another bolt at it. <laughs> it just kind of gets hit and he says, no more, flesh. And keeps I mean, <laughs> laser pointer to the eye. How's ah. that doing? Oh, that's not good. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna give him a whiz save. It's just this improvised barrage. Uh, no, the fuck you don't. You need to keep him from climbing a tree for two hours. We're fine. <laughs> he does kind of. You do successfully blind blind him. Uh, uh, with the laser pointer, and he he falls and hits the ground. Um, he'll take some falling damage. Yeah, the ground's not silver. He'll be fine. Yeah, is that is that true? Yeah, he's got all those werewolf hit yep. points. <laughs> I forgot about how weird things work sometimes. He's fine. Unless the ground is an enchanted item. Yes. Well, you're not in that weird glade, although that wasn't magic either, but um um okay. Uh, so you're going to all attempt to distract him for the next 2 hours basically. Okay. Uh he doesn't do too well on his rolls. So, uh you all are successful in uh distracting him and the sun uh, crests uh, the shadows get really long as the sun crests the horizon and uh, you can hear uh, one last chorus of howls before um, um, you can hear the chains kind of hit the ground in the hold and uh, down below you see um, a, a man up kind of hit the ground uh <laughs> his clothing stretched and torn and bloody around him. We wouldn't happen to recognize this guy, would we? Um, do you think you recognize him from kind of just walking around right before launch? Like he was definitely on one of the other ships. Uh, give everyone give me either an intelligence or wisdom check. Or, or charisma, if that also works for you, to see if you remember him. Nine. He made an impression on you. Ooh. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Dirty twenty. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so Isabel and Wynn. Yeah, yeah. He was. Uh, he was likewise uh, the quartermaster of one of the other ships. Uh, his name was Dick Stanton. <laughs> uh, and he is a half elf. Do we see any other sign of the one that went chasing after the ball? No. He must have been distracted. He's going to have a fun time waking up. All right. I would like to go down and start uh, trying, I guess, to help, but also just kind of to make sure that everything's okay. But yeah, so you take the lift down. Um, uh, he's passed out down there. Huh. You know, like poking with my boot a little. Kind of, uh, kind of opens his eyes and then he just starts screaming. Yeah, I'm gonna go check on Maddie as well. Uh, she is, yeah, she's passed out still, and none of all the Warforged are like looking at Clangly, and Clangly kind of shrugs like. Oh. <laughs> I just, I've never dealt with a werewolf before, everyone. Like, <laughs> uh, so they all turn to look at you, Isabel, when you walk in. 
He should be fine, but we're going to need those chains again in a month. Fix also it. should probably get to work fixing her armor. They all kind of nod. Uh, back on the ground, Claire, yeah, just screaming. Hmm. Interesting. Excuse me, sir. 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 Yes. I, oh my god, I ate them. You wait what now? Uh, two of the other crew members. I couldn't, st I couldn't stop. I could see, every I could hear the, I could hear Paylock Park, Paylark talking to me, and I couldn't do anything about it. I could feel this other. It was like being trapped. But I, de I definitely ate them. So you remember eating them? Yes. Do you remember everything else? Transforming, the running around, the trying to climb the tree? Yes. Yes, I remember the bolt and the laser pointer. Good. Good. Okay. Good? How is that good? I mean, it's bad. You ate people. That's not good. But it's good that you remember. Is it? Oh, there's <laughs> one. There's one. Uh, um, Claire was saying that it's good that, that, that he remembers and he vehemently disagreed. Well, it also means that you were completely mindless during this transformation. I, I, I had no control. Hmm. Interesting. What else did Paylor say to you? Uh, he... He said this fulfilled a bargain and that uh, it finally fulfilled a bargain and that it w obviously I should go hunt flesh. And I tried it, they tried to find animals, but there are none uh, on the ground of this of these woods. Um, you know, only the bugs or birds up in the trees. And I think we saw a giant raccoon. Hmm. You should probably steer clear of the raccoons. Okay. Well, given that you did consume your other crew members, we're probably going to have to keep an eye on you, as well as our quartermaster, who also transformed into a werewolf last night. And uh, in case this should ever happen again, we're going to keep you under strict observation so that we can get a little bit more of this uh, information about this bargain. At least that's my diagnosis. Huh. Uh, it's weird being a doctor again. Is that what you are? Not technically, but in a way. It's a mad, this is how I lost my medical license <laughs> vibe there. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I forget that, you know, Claire's past life she was kind of a mad scientist well, I mean legally can can you call me a doctor I had I mean legally no but I probably know more I know about the body than most so who do you want putting you back together the person who took you apart or some doctor <laughs> exactly now I'm not sure where we're going we're either going TF2 medic, or we're going. I just forgot his name from Venture Brothers. Oh, uh, which one? <laughs> There's a bunch of evil mad scientists on there. Not the evil uh, mad scientist. The other half with Doctor White. Oh, Billy Quizboy. 
Yes. Oh, right. Yeah, he's technically not a doctor. <laughs> he's technically not a doctor, but he is the most competent medical professional in that show. Yep. Yeah. yeah Speaking yeah. of being a medical professional, can I do any sort of like medicine check on him sure. to see if there's lasting effects yeah, yeah. or any sort of physical injury from this? Ooh. That's really good. Uh, I think it's 20. Yeah, 23. Okay. Yeah. Um, he, other than, uh, mentally, he does not seem well. He seems like this was clearly a traumatic event. Um, but fizz. What the heck? Good question. Uh, sorry. I just heard something. Windows beep did a loop. I'm sure I kicked a wire or something. Um, uh, physically, he seems okay. He does not look like he sustained any injuries. Uh, I mean, he, he claims to have eaten a person. That's probably not good. But he doesn't look... You know, feeling around, it's not... Yeah, you don't think there's anything... He's not going to be sick. <laughs> Like, all trace of, like, the previous, like, nervous breakdown is kind of gone. And now she's just, like, picking up his arms. Just like, okay, no more claws. Kind of opening his mouth. Okay, your fangs are gone. You don't have any teeth. And your nose is the same. This blood on you is clearly someone else's. You don't have any physical wounds. Uh, just kind of physically examining him until uh, other people <laughs> intervene. <laughs> I'm up on the ship waiting for Maddie to wake up. So... Uh, uh, yeah. uh, I, th I think mm -hmm. Wynn would have like come down to see <laughs> oh. how Dick's getting on. Dick Stan, how you doing? I'm top red in this town. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, Dick's clearly not okay, and Claire is um doing a very thorough examination. <laughs> uh. So back on the ship, Matilda eventually wakes up. Uh, she kind of opens her eyes and, and looks around. And she goes, well, shit. Yes. I would like to be clear that that has never happened to me before. I believe you. Unfortunately, I don't think you were alone. Oh, great. Okay. So we've got at least one or two other crews that are probably going to be MIA. The good news is that it confirms that the other ships are within eight-hour walking distance. That's great. Um, that's good. That's good. Is that going to happen to me every night? At least once a month every full moon. I don't know exactly how your phases work. Uh, supposedly, again, I'm going off of legend and folklore, not really a trained professional in this. Uh, she just sort of starts crying. And she says, all I've ever wanted to do is explore this stupid planet. And now I'm going to have to go back home. Because I'm a goddamn monster. How much do you remember? Everything. Everything. Um, I'm a corporate liability. There's no way I can stay here. I can't... I know I can't stay here. Even if they let me. I could not do that to any... I tried to eat a person. Well, we currently have no way of getting back that we know of. So... He said I have a, we have a month? Hopefully. Well... 
I'll have to go back in a month, I guess. This also means that there's a chance that everyone who comes down here for the first time is an unknown. So it behooves us to come up with some sort of long-term solution on keeping you contained when this happens. Short of just chaining you up before time. Also, I... I would think, if you can remember, then there's a chance that you could rest control, but I don't know. Because I didn't go through it. It it felt hopeless. That doesn't mean it is, because I do remember it. I remember thinking, uh, having thoughts, but it felt... It felt bad, obviously. I, but the part that was Palark felt it felt I can't even describe it when you go to church and you just feel safe and warm there it felt like that even though I knew it was bad and wrong I will say one thing. I have not known you for very long, but I know that. You are not a monster. This... What happened so far was not you. It is a thing that is affecting you. But you are not a monster, Matilda. You are one of the most dependable people here. Monthly wolfings are not. And we have to figure out where the other crews are and what happened with them. If it was just the one crew with other wolf, other crew with wolves, or more. Well, um, you said one of them's down there. If yes. He, if he remembers, maybe he can lead us back. Um, and thank you, Isabel. You're very welcome, Maddie. Kind of wipes her tears and she says, Okay, okay, we're... Enough of this. Feeling sad for ourselves. Let's go. Um, she kind of tries to... She tries to, like, sort of just re-affix her armor properly... She eventually just takes it off and puts it in her bag and kind of puts on just work clothes. Langley and I will get to work on it when we can. Thanks. It'll be okay. Uh, and she pulls her... She tightens the strap on her greatsword over, over her back. Um, let's see. Perfect. Uh, okay. Uh, everyone <coughs> goes back to the ground. Also, did I find out from the stick guy how many people he ate? Uh, he said two. Two. Okay. Yeah. So that's not a full crew, which means that there are survivors. Interesting. Also, all of the Warforged would have been all right. But he can confirm it was not the full crew. There were other um, non-Warforged amongst them that, that kind of got away. And, or, what and, about and, other werewolves? He says that he could hear the howls, but he only ever met up with the other one, uh, mm -hmm. who was a uh, woman named Vera.
Well, Gloom, do you know which way you threw that ball? Uh, he says, yes. This way. Let's it go get that and see if we can find our other friend. It is very bright. It will be easy to find. You had him throw it into the death glade, Andy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Gloom did not mean to kill. Um, uh, let's see if he did throw it into the death glade. Why did you say that, Jay? He wants us to poke at the death glade, okay? I do, but but not at poor Gloom's expense. <laughs> he could not he could not deal with that. Uh, and I rolled high, so that means Gloom, my boy, is fine. Uh, uh, near the glade, however, you find a woman with uh, ripped uh, armor, uh, or kind of yeah, busted leather armor. Uh, and uh, awkwardly, she's asleep still, but like she has the ball sort of in her mouth. Uh, Good dog. I think Wynn will just like shake her shoulder and like. Oh. oh. That's like the worst hangover I've ever had. So, funny question Did you eat anyone? That is a weird question, um, but it's relevant. Uh, no, I attacked some Warforged, but they're not very tasty. Ugh. Did you bite anyone? I bit a Warforged. Uh, did I bite okay. like any? I didn't bite any uh, uh, um, non-metallic people. We have to ask that okay. to Dick when we get back if he bit anyone other than the people he ate. She kind of she kind of gingerly touches her mouth and pulls a tooth out. And she's like, oh no. Oh, oh no. Wait, Issa, did you just said why do we have to worry about them biting people? That's how it spreads. Oh boy. What? They <laughs> bite someone and that person doesn't also get mauled and killed and that's how it spreads. Like other people can get this? Yes. Well. You can also be born with it, unless you remember getting bitten by any big dogs at any point in your life. No. No, oh she kinda she kinda touches she's like, oh my gear. Um anyone see a bow? I don't think so. No. Well, we have spares. Bows are easy. Okay. Is Dick okay? He is uninjured. I would not say okay. That's a specific and sensible answer to that question. Ask um, and answered. Let's just say he wasn't as successful as like you as the not eating people. Is this, is this someone's ball? Gloom retrieves his ball. Um. Uh. Okay. Uh. So. Uh. Uh. Vera introduces herself as Vera. Uh, she's a human. And um, uh, says, well, okay. Um, is, this, is this your entire contingent? How many of us went after Gloom's ball? Uh, let's say the four of you and Gloom. No, there are more of us. We also had a werewolf in our midst. Were you and Dick part of the same crew on the same ship? No. No, I was on uh, uh, Ranger 1. I think he's from Ranger 4. Were you a quartermaster? Uh, no. Hmm. No, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the cartography team. 
How many ships were there? Five. Hmm. Were you guys in the ship that crashed? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, anybody die? No. No. Mm -mm. Oh. Good job. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Okay. So that's... Okay, so that's three ships accounted for. Okay. Um, Weren't we all... Three ships? What happened to the other two? Weren't we all supposed to have the same landing site? Oh, yeah. Um... Look, the skies are rough. Uh, oh, You're not wrong. Were you not attacked by, like, the winged lizards? Uh, ours was a giant rock. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Terrifying. Those big parrots. I could never look at them at the zoo. They were always so creepy. Just horrible. Uh, no. Uh, uh, yeah, winged lizards is as best as I can... They were like crocodiles with wings. Did they spit fire or anything else? No, just very yappy. Okay. Um, Weird. But as far as I know, uh, three ships made it to the landing sp spot. To the proper landing zone. Our ship's trashed. Ours is currently a couple hundred feet up in trees. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Intact, but in trees. Well, intact's good. In trees, bad. But intact, good. Okay. There's... So we'll take a walk back to our ship, and then uh, you can take us back to your ship? That sounds. That sounds good. Oh, we should also retrieve our makeshift camp. There are supplies there. That would be useful. Oh, okay. That's good. You made camp. Okay. Uh, so you start walking through the woods. Um, and uh, when, as you're walking, you hear a chittering that you recognize as Queen Zap Zaps. Hey! Uh, she says... Uh, and it, I mean, obviously some of her words don't quite translate to, to common very well, but she basically says like crown smiths, makers of makers of beautiful hat. Um, uh, uh, hello. Hello. Uh, we found friends like you, uh, uh, people made of rocks, kind of gesturing at the Warforged. She doesn't really understand what metal is. Um, uh, people made of rocks and other squishy folks. Sometimes they turn into uh, snarlies. Yeah, that that's a new thing. We didn't know about that. <laughs> that good. That bad. But good you didn't know. We were mad. We were upset. You didn't warn us. But you not yeah. know. That makes sense. You good friends. Oh. You're a good friend too. Uh, you need Big Rock moved? What, what Big Rock? Big Rock and Tree. Oh. Yeah. Can you get it down for us? I would actually rather it stayed there for the moment. Oh, never mind. <laughs> it not move? Understand. Yeah. You hide rock. Keep safe. We're keeping it safe from the, uh, from the Snarlies. Snarlies. They mean, they try and eat me. Me zap zap. Did the snarly you zap zap uh, die or not be alive anymore? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, it 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 learned lesson and run away. For I am queen of the zap zaps. You are indeed. Uh, 
Did you see which way it ran? Uh, yes. Can lead you there. Uh, we're gonna go back to our big rock for a sec. You can lead us there, too? Yes. Okay. You've made a lot of NPCs that I love. I think Queen Zab Zaps wins. Uh, okay. Um, everybody goes back to the ship. So, uh, four head count for my own sake. Who do we have? Let's see. We have Dick Stanton, top bread in this town. Dick Stanton. <laughs> uh, Vera. Amon. What's her name? Uh, the 11 of you and Queen Zapsaps. Arguably the most important crew member. <laughs> yeah. Clearly. Uh, I don't know. It's Spicy's a pretty important person. DAH. Very important hedgehog. Um, and as discussed pre stream, if bitten, could be a werehog. Um, uh, uh, I don't even know how that would work. <laughs> She's an incarnate, like, fire spirit. Like, I don't think they can catch a curse, but... <laughs> um, Only one way to find out. <laughs> we shouldn't find out. No. Has an no. alarming number of hit points, though. <laughs> Um. Uh, okay. Like the last time we were dealing with wolf creatures, we learned something surprising about the animal companion. Noodle does how much damage? What? <laughs> broken. <laughs> As everyone always says, Beastmaster Rangers are broken. No, but actually, flying snakes are good animal companions. Um, because they do all that poison damage. Um, okay. So you are all back to the ship. Uh, Dick and Vera kind of, kind of nod at each other and look away quickly. Um, and... Oh, hey, inside that... Sure. That's... I want to know what's going on between them. Oh, I actually rolled all right. Uh, 16. Yeah, you think it's kind of a look of, like, they know they both just did something bad. It's, the, like, they're and they, they know it was them, but they're kind of just, we're just not going to talk about being werewolves, so. Huh. Weird. It's unhealthy. <laughs> not much Clara's going to do about that. She's a necromancer, not a therapist. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I have to do something real fast. I will be right back. And then we all succeeded, and everyone went home happy, and <laughs> that was it. Good job, Queen everyone. Zap Zap became the rightful ruler of Wyan Yoth. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> and she ruled with a type of benevolent fist from her home in Elsir with uh, her new crown and her many babies. want to pet a baby lightning raccoon, but I also don't want to get fried to death. <laughs> Can you pet it with your, like... I guess you couldn't pet it with your metal arm. No, 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 no. Get, like, a wooden broom and then just use the bristles to just... I got a full suit of chain mail and ground it. You have to invent work. rubber. <laughs> well, no, because... There are actual, like, suits that work sort of basically like a Faraday cage where it goes the current over through the suit instead of through the person in the suit. And they're basically just full suits of chain mail that have a ground connected to them. Because electricity wow. would rather flow through easily conductive metal than a person. I just need to make one of those and then I can pet all of the baby lightning <laughs> raccoons.
just have to invent advanced electrical theory first, which, you know, isn't like undoable, but I think yeah. my specialties are elsewhere. I mean, that's sort of like the stuff you do after we build a base and, you know, not die or starve to death. If there were ever a thing to give it precedent, it would be petting baby raccoon babies. How's chat doing? I don't know, Marty. How you doing? <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll rewatch this episode. I'll know what was said. <laughs> uh, we talked about trying to pet lightning raccoon babies. Yeah, it was and, uh, mostly about Queen Zap Zap and her, and her children. <laughs> well, good. Um. Uh, okay. So, sorry about that. Um. So yes, so you're all back together. So you have, uh, well, you have several options, and you can do whatever you want. Um, you could uh, go to the Danger Glade, obviously. Nope. Uh, Probably not. You could uh, go back to where the uh, ships were supposed to meet, dicks from that group. You can go back to where the sh uh, various ship crashed, or you could follow Queen Zap Zaps to the werewolf she fought. Or, again, whatever you want. It might be good to go find that one that uh, werewolf queen zap zap bat fought. Because it's like, it's, it's just going to be a person who wakes up in the middle of a forest. And yeah, I'd say unattended werewolves are pretty high on the priority list. Yep. Sounds, sounds reasonable. Maybe we could put our many NPCs to use and have, like, one group go off and rejoin the other ships, and then we go off and find the lone werewolf. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, okay, so the four of you, Queen Zap Zaps, anyone else, or to send everybody? Uh. I mean, who wants to come with us to find an unattended werewolf, and who wants to go reestablish connections with the other crew? Like, everyone would prefer to reestablish connections, basically. But then you all go do Queen that. Zap Zaps, okay. It is. I guess at least you know one or two people, or two or three people, should stay with the ship, our ship, at least. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Uh, Gris says he should stay since he's the captain and uh, Wheezy will stay with him. Uh, and then Hamlet, uh, Gloom, Dexter, Dust. This is a test. I think that's everybody. Oh, and Matilda, obviously, will go with the other two. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so Queen Zap Zap starts um, jumping through the trees and uh, looks back at you and says um, uh, you keep up? Sure. <laughs> okay. We'll try. Yeah, she start, She's a very fast climber. Uh, so you all start double timing it. Okay. Uh, are druids the one where you can switch out spells for the day? Yes, I'm oh, that's pretty right. I sure. Switch my spells. I think both of you can do that. Uh, let me double check on druids, but I'm pretty sure they're like divine casters in that way. As in missing wizard levels. <laughs> Let's see. Low D and D Beyond. I never want monsters for dr when I type a character class in. <laughs> spoiler: I don't want monsters. I want the character class. 
Let's you see. searched druid. Did you mean bullet? <laughs> well, it's like turtle druid. I don't. I don't mean this. I don't. Uh, you prepare the list of druid spells that are available to you. Yeah, so you get to uh, prepare a bunch of spells. I can look it up for you. Oh, okay, you, okay. But it'll probably be like... I should tell you. You campaign... Yeah, uh, yeah. Dandy Sean should just tell you how many you prepare, but. Okay. Okay, good to know. Um. Okay. So, can I get survival checks from everyone, please? Oh, oh no. <laughs> Twelve. Twelve. Oh, sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Oh, that's a natural twenty. Which oh, means dang! Yay! <laughs> at total twenty-four. Okay. One of us can make survival checks. Uh, and Clangley got an unmodified twelve. So that means uh, with two successes, one of them being a natural 20, you all um, can uh, follow Queen Zap Zaps with no problem. Um, as you do, the terrain changes from sort of deep uh, pine forest to uh, the trees start getting a lot smaller. The, the ground starts getting a lot sandier. Uh, and it goes from kind of like proper pine forest to more like a pine barrens um, uh, with occasional patches of marshland. Uh, and where there are marshlands, uh, you can see the trees kind of thin out a lot. And there's a bunch of dead trees, uh, uh, ghost forests. Uh, they're called because seawater floods them and kills the trees. Um, uh so you're walking, and in the distance, uh, on the uh, a, a ways from you, but so much you, that you can see a small figure uh, is um, a person, uh, a human, another human, uh, and they, they start to wave at you. Huh. We'll wave back. <laughs> Claire is distracted by the dead trees. Okay. <laughs> Um, um, Arboreal necromancy. Hmm. Mm. Um, okay. So, uh, they approach you and they say, oh, okay, cool. Um, I don't, I mean, I know where I am, but I don't really i got i got all turned around after i woke up this morning um I, what what ship are you were you all on oh uh, which number were we on you were on three okay yeah uh they say they were on two uh oh man i um how are you Pretty good, all things considered. All things considered. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, this planet's horrible. Yes. We noticed that. Um, something... Something's f followed me through the dead trees. And until I got into the swamp, I, I didn't, I felt like I was being watched. Uh, we should get back then. Yeah, we should go. <laughs> um. Okay. Do you do you all know how to get back? What? <laughs> kind of for the first time, they notice the giant 
lightning raccoon. <laughs> the fuck is that? This Queen is Zap Queen Zap Zap. Yeah. Why? She's our new friend. Is she like the sovereign ruler of this place? As uh, far as we're concerned, yes. Kind of gives a little half bow curtsy. She's the only thing living here so far that hasn't tried to eat us, so. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Uh, they they pull a, a, a six-shooter off their waist and kind of open the chamber and load several bullets into it like they had probably shot a couple put it back into their to their gun belt gunsmith need to ask questions arising <laughs> not the time and place later <laughs> they would be thrilled to answer uh, they introduce themselves as emerald Um, they kind of they look back to the forest line and they say they they kind of like shudder and they say I said this place was fucked right yes cool. yeah cool um did anyone else turn into a giant rage monster yes quite a number of people apparently that's good in a way <laughs> any of you it's... no our quartermaster did at least two others with you four people that we know of four okay I'm so far in... And Gloom said that uh, they heard five howls, right? Correct. So. <laughs> In his expert opinion. <laughs> with uh, he Maddie. He has the most experience mm -hmm. with this out of all of us. He is the expert werewolfologist. Uh, so yeah, you've, you've encountered four. Uh, oh, four including Maddie or? Yes. Yeah, so, so Emerald, Vera, Dick, Maddie. So, so there's you, at least two more, or one just, more. Just one more. One more. Just one more. Okay. Oh, oh, I. Oh, yes, there is just one more. So the five from earlier, Gloom was including Matilda in it. I see. Okay. Okay. Yes, like that. That math is confusing. <laughs> Slash was unclear. Um. Okay. Uh, can I get perception checks, please? Maybe. Six. Pretty good. Claire is too busy scraping samples of the dead tree bark into a vial. You may not uh, get a perception check. That is also a six. Uh, Seventeen. Seventeen. Thank God one of us can see. Yeah, Clangley also. <laughs> one of us has a wisdom. He yeah, adds nothing to it. Okay, so Clangley got a fifteen. Uh, Queen Zaps Zaps, who I will have to write up proper stats for. She got a seven. Yes. And Emerald. Crap. Okay. But. Not good enough. Okay. Uh, on my end, on Wynn's end, it is good enough. Uh, so Wynn, you see, uh, kind of out of the corner of your eye from where uh, Emerald had kind of been eyeing, you see a little winged creature kind of break off the tree line and do this awful, like, laugh scream. And it kind of tears through the air. And it's not very big. 
It's, you know, maybe two feet tall, but it's got, like, bat wings, uh, like, this weird, long kind of kangaroo face with fangs, tiny little claws, and little cloven hooves. And it's just kind of screaming through the air at you, and Emerald's like, fuck that thing! It's the thing oh. that watched me! Uh, uh... Andy, are there Jersey Devils on this planet? You're in Pine Barrens, so maybe. <laughs> and yes, yes, this is the Jersey Devil. <laughs> oh, no. Perfect. We run into Mothman. I'm going to lose my shit. Oh, I will be so pleased. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so it's just, like, screaming at me? Yeah, and kind of coming at you. Uh... Okay, okay. So are we shooting so, like, at it? Like, Oh, uh, yeah, you can attack it for sure. <laughs> I guess, yeah, when we just dodge out of the way, like, oh, no. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, you you see it coming with plenty of time to dodge out of the way. Emerald has just started fanning their gun. Uh, miss, yep. just miss, miss. We're miss, shooting miss, at it. Miss, miss, miss. Can't roll above a 10 today, so that's probably going to miss. Should we forget? That's a 13? Uh... The 13 shoot the Jersey Devil? That sounds like an old folk song. <laughs> uh, a 13. A 13 is a miss. Nope. I don't hit it either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. What can Clangley do? Clangley punches things, right? Yeah. Ding ding, ding ding. <laughs> just um, just goes what? <laughs> Going to introduce them to my fists. Ding and ding. <laughs> uh, I think uh, uh, Win would uh have after ducking out of the way would have uh. Spicy, go into battle mode. Okay. Okay, everybody roll initiative. Oh. Oh, boy. Spicy, engage battle mode. Oh, oh I no. rolled a 7 on the attack, but a natural 20 on initiative. God. 16 initiative. First time 21. rolling up with a 10. Okay, so... I... Mm -hmm. I rolled a 6. Okay. So that's Claire first. Then Isabel. Room. <laughs> what was the reason? What was the reason? Uh, Annoying truck car wanted to let you know what its initiative was. It was. Brrr. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, sure. That's great. Okay. Uh. Let's see. Um. Uh, Claire, you get to go first. Why do I get to go first? Because you rolled the highest. Because you rolled a natural 20. Yeah, I'm the wizard. I'm not supposed to go... I'm not supposed to do this kind of stuff. Alright, I'm just going to try the same thing that I tried again. And I roll a natural 1. So no. Um... My ray of sickness does not hit. Uh, but as a bonus action, I'm going to misty step the fuck away from that. Okay. So, like, so, like, Claire is, like, has a dagger to, like, one of the dead trees and is, like, looks up, sees this thing, goes, ah, casts one ray of sickness, misses, casts another, misses even more, and is, like, fuck it, and then blips out. Okay. So, just... 
your wizard bounces everyone. <laughs> in a, she I'm panics. Animal, uh, in a swirl of Listen, mist. I have raged spells. You'll be fine. Uh, in a swirl of mist, Claire disappears. Uh, Isabel. Bang. Bang, bang. Dirty 20. That's a hit. Do. Sixteen damage. Jesus. Yep, rolled max on the D twelve. Twelve plus four. Yep, okay. I'm going to bonus action dash get behind cover and actually Uh How much do I want to hurt this thing? Yeah, I'm small and I'm furious. Let's add another three damage onto that. Okay, so that's 19 total? <laughs> 19 total. <laughs> okay. Okay, perfect. I get that back on short rests? Dope. I thought Fury of the Small was a long rest thing. No, that's that's good on a short rest. Yep. Oh, you all might be a weird party who likes short rests. <laughs> yep. Um, because I know wizards like them. Druids might like them too. I don't know. Um. Uh. Okay. Can I get wisdom saves from everyone, please? Hopefully. Nope. Clang these good. Emerald's not. Mm. Oof. Did I put the wrong number for this? Seven. I did. Uh, Thirteen. Okay. Twelve. Oh, was it a twelve from? Yeah. Three? I rolled an eight. Okay. Well, if you got a thirteen, if you got under a thirteen. So 12 and under. You are frightened. Uh, which uh, the the Jersey Devil, or the Baron's Devil, since this is not Jersey, uh, lets out a blood-curdling scream. Uh, and it's horrifying. And then it's going to... Claire just looks out and goes, weird. I can shoot you while I'm running away from you. And then it's going to try and claw at Win. Uh, nope. Oh, oh, there's two. That's two. Uh, okay, so when you get clawed at, only one of them hits. Really? Uh, what? Well, oh no. I'm, my, ar what? my armor class is 11. Two of them hit. This is why I should always <laughs> ask. Uh, so you take a total of 14 slashing damage. Ow. Okay. Well, that's, like, over half my hit points. <laughs> perfect. I would not describe that as perfect. Jersey Devil thinks this is going great. Jersey Devil about to get shot again. Yeah. Unfortunately, Emerald will actually aim. They had one shot left. They'll aim, close their eyes, but they're scared, so they have disadvantage. Shoot. And they fail. Uh, so they will spend the rest of their turn reloading their gun. 
Uh, they get a save. And we'll save out of being frightened. They had they had moved away. Uh, Give me some time. I can turn that into a bonus action instead of an action. Really? We're going to talk. We're going to talk. Um, and then it is uh, your turn, Wynn. Wynn will uh, call upon Spicy to enter her spicy, spicy. battle mode. Now she's extra spicy. Like, you just see her, like, be wreathed in flames. And she gets slightly bigger. She's <laughs> she went from two chili peppers to three. <laughs> Going from Sonic to supersonic here. Let's go. And then, uh, so... So apparently when I summon my creature, uh, each creature within ten feet of the spirit, other than me... Uh, must make a dexterity saving throw against my spell DC. Uh, let's see. 14? Which it... Ah, it saved. Oh, sorry. Gotta get to level 4. Uh, and then I guess I'll use my bonus action to command spicy to cast one of its attacks okay uh oh cast flame seed which uh fuck yes <laughs> oh no it's a natural one okay <laughs> well that kind of sucks uh, yep, sorry. <laughs> uh, is there anything else on your turn? Uh, I guess I can't really do anything else because I'm frightened, right? Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, it, it was... From, uh, income, unless you take a bonus action on your turn. To command it. And, and it took an action to... To summon, summon it. it. Okay, yeah, then, then that's all you can do on your turn. But you do get to make a whiz save to see if you get out of being frightened. Okay. All my dice are failing me. Ah, come back. Uh, 18. Oh, you are no longer frightened. Yay! And then Clangly will load up a punch. He move. That's not very good. Uh, he will miss. <laughs> um, oh, but he did, during the kind of surprise round, he did do a little bit of damage to it. He hit, but I rolled garbage. Okay. Uh... So back up to the top is Claire. God, I don't really have any other spells that are going to help, so we're going to try to hit him again. Okay. That's much better. Dirty 20. That's a hit. <laughs> okay. And because I kind of want this thing dead, I'm going to use my other second level spell slot. Uh, those are good numbers. Uh, 16 poison damage. Uh, make a constitution saving throw. Natural one. He's poisoned! <gasps> Beautiful. Hey. Okay. And how much damage was that again? 16. 16. Okay. Uh, oh, bloodied. For sure. Only just now? <laughs> I'm out of spell slots. <laughs> um, okay, and poisoned. Which means everything he does sucks. Yay! Ooh, okay. Uh, anything else, Claire? 
Nope. Okay. Uh, Issa, is there anything you would like to do on your turn? Uh, well, I'm frightened, so... Not a whole lot. I... While trying to, like, move behind a tree or something, she is going to take her right hand and kind of, like, grab the shoulder of her metallic arm, pull the pauldron off, throw it up against a tree, shout, Paulette, legs out, and I'm going to create my turret. Okay. Awesome. Which is going to just, like, land sideways on the tree, and it is going to shoot the devil for me. Okay. (laughs) Turret's not afraid. Nope, and it can shoot on a bonus action. Going to be... Do I actually add to make you shoot things? Just tell me what that is. (laughs) D&D Beyond, it's never been easier. Large cats, I know. Mm Mm-hmm. I rolled a 10, but I'm trying to figure out what I add to it for my um, Force Ballista. Let's see. I smart and write it down. Spell attack. Okay. I was smart and wrote it down, so it's a 15. 15's a hit. 2d8. It's an 8. And a 7. So that's 15 force damage, and I think it's pushed back five feet. Yes, it is. Okay, so it kind of somersaults through the air. Uh. Okay. It is poisoned and well-bloodied. It is now long, no longer next to anyone, so it's going to run away because it has no incentive to attack anyone anymore. Um, uh, and it's a wild animal. Uh, okay, it's going to run unless anyone would like or fly unless anyone would like to stop it. Stop it! No. Take parting shots at it? Yes. Okay. Uh, hand up, Claire. Did you? No, I'm, I'm surrendering. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, you, you can take parting shots at it. Uh, Emerald will do the same thing. Yeah. Emerald will hit once. I won't. That was a five. Yeah, she... Or they got a... Um... Turret won't. That was a three. 20. No, uh, not natural, but... Only does a couple. Let's see. That's not the right time. It doesn't matter. They hit it, but. Uh, okay. The Jersey Devil skitters skid- off. Emerald spins their gun, blows away the smoke, and goes, fucking sucks. Holsters their gun. Correct. Weird. Paulette's gonna, like, spider climb up Isabel and sit on her shoulder. Uh, I think Lynn's just like coughing up blood, gonna cast a cure wounds on herself. Okay. Uh, perfect. And uh, <laughs> with with Wynn uh, healing herself, we will end the episode there. Uh, how many hit points do you get back, Wynn? Uh, seven plus two, so that's nine. Okay. I'm more than halfway. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, uh, perfect. Would you like 1d8 plus imp temporary hit points? Because uh, <laughs> I have a turret yeah. up for the next hour. I may as well use it. I guess so. If you're providing. I mean, they don't go away, right? What is... Everyone get eight more temporary hit points. Yeah, they float. So, uh want to remember that for Clangley. Oh, I can I can just put it on a sheet. We, we all get those eight temporary hit points? Everyone within 15 feet. That's Heck pretty good. Yeah. 
Everything within ten feet. Okay, everybody huddle up and then you yeah, get, like you get ten pit points. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, turret good. Yeah. Uh. Okay. My my primary class feature that I can use once a day is really useful. What? <laughs> Who would have thought? Uh. Uh. Outros and plugs. Uh, you can follow Dan on Twitter at lightningfast11. And I know he said last time that he's uh, been trying to stream on Twitch more. So, uh, Lightning Fast. I think he is still Lightning Fast 11 on Twitch. Let me check yeah, real quick. It might be Lightning Fast Studios. You can't show me my entire follow list at once, can you? Uh, it looks like it's just Lightning Fast. Okay. Uh, so follow him on Twitch for Lightning Fast at Lightning Fast. Uh, that's that. Uh, Liz. Hi, I'm Liz. Uh, I guess you can follow me on the social medias. I just posted about this artwork I got for Win. Look how cute he is. Can't sort of see Spicy, but Spicy's also there. Oh yeah, Spicy's blocked by the numbers, right? Yeah, so let me. Get the full picture up. Aha! There we go. Look how cute! Done by Mira! That, that person over here. Here, somewhere. <laughs> here. That one in <laughs> my view of the screen, but like, I don't know. I don't have it memorized where we all are on the overlay. I can't see it. Um, uh, excellent. And speaking of, Mira. Hi, I'm Mira. And yes, I did do that lovely art. I was commissioned by Liz to visualize when I had a super fun time. It was great. Uh, so cute. So fun. Uh, I haven't posted it on any of my social media yet. Um, but if you want to see it, you can follow Liz or you can follow me and I'll eventually get to it. You can also see a picture of Claire, who is my phone background. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so, yeah, we're matching. Um, uh, yeah, you go follow, find cool artwork, and then play D&D &D with your friends and draw your D&D &D characters. You don't have to be a good artist to do it. Just, yeah. It's always good to have art of your D&D &D characters. Uh, excellent. Mm -hmm. And Jay. Uh, hi, I'm Jay. Play tabletop games with your friends. Don't really got a whole lot. <laughs> Uh, I'll echo what everyone said. Play games with your friends. Uh, draw draw art of your characters and your friends' characters because uh, they will love it. Uh, be safe. Be kind. Uh, wear a mask. Get a vaccine. Get a booster if and when you can. Uh, next week, uh, Monday, is Glitter Hearts, the long-awaited first episode of Glitter Hearts. And Wednesday is Star Chasers. And next Sunday should be Dragon Lords, maybe, but it's a holiday weekend again. <laughs> so we have to talk about that. Um, okay, but that's it. Have a great night, everybody. Uh, follow us. Give us a like. Give us a click. Give us a do it. Mash a bell. Um, leave a comment. I lo We love all the comments we get. Um, that's it. Hi, everybody. Hi. That was a fun game.